OK. So if you guys go and look at this, and you see that there's the tangent of your double angle. You guys can see we have this formula. 2 tangent of theta all over 1 minus tangent squared. Yes, no, whatever so. OK, um, so now, again, let's go ahead and plug in this information, right? So we have 2 theta, or we have our sine. So we know tangent. So tangent, oops, sorry, that's a negative 4 thirds. Remember, it's 4 thirds. So we have 2 times 4 thirds all over 1 minus 4 thirds squared. Now remember, we've got to use our order of operations. And then remember, whenever we multiply a fraction times a whole number, remember this can be rewritten as 2 over 1. So now I have 8 thirds all over 1 minus um, 16 thirds. I'm sorry, 16 ninths. Whew. All right. Now, this is usually comes to a point 16 ninths. I squared the 4 thirds. Okay? Now, we're usually getting to a point where people are like, Eh, I don't really like this, right? Kind of too many fractions going on. But if you guys remember, we've practiced talking about complex fractions multiple, multiple times throughout this year. The best way, I think, to get rid of multiple when you have complex fractions is get rid of your denominators. If you have a 5 in the denominator, if you get rid of it, you can multiply by the reciprocal, right? By multiplying it by a 5 in the, if you have a 5 in the denominator, multiply by 5 in the numerator. So if I notice, out of all my denominators, what is my common denominator here? 1, 9, and 3, what's my common denominator? 9. So if I multiply everything times 9, watch what happens. <coughs> that goes to 3, right? 9 divided by 3 is 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 9 times 1 is 9. Those 9 times 16 over 9 just gives you 16. And that's your final answer. There's another way you could do it. You could also rewrite this as a fraction. So I could always also rewrite this as 8 thirds divided by 9 over 9 minus 16 over 9. Do you guys agree with me? I could rewrite the number 1 as 9 ninths. Is that still 1? Is 9 ninths still 1? Yes. But now they have common denominators. So now I can subtract them. So now I have 8 thirds divided by negative 7 ninths. Now, what happens when you have a fraction divided by fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So you could do it either math either way. You're going to get the exact same answer. Okay, but again, what is difficult about these problems is not anything in pre 